Hey there. I'm a little late to releasing this. I've been sick and I've had premiere issues and I don't even know if I'll be able to edit this. And so I'm getting this out a little bit late, but but Elgato just released the Stream Deck 2.0 update. And this is a big update I've been waiting for a little while. Some of us have had beta access. I, I had the option of getting it. I wanted to wait for a more stable version. Uh, but if you've seen Terrence tweet tweets of him using like three Stream Decks along with all of his keyboards, that's he's been working with the beta of version 2.0. Um, and I'll touch on that in a minute. But they finally updated uh, the Stream Deck software to version 2.0. And they have a really cool feature coming in 2.1, which is currently in development and testing right now. First and foremost, I have a list here on Reddit. I'll have it linked in the video description. Um, I'm just going to go through some of the main features that they've added in 2.0. But they now have smart profiles, which is pretty standard for any macro application-y kind of thing, where your... You can set up different profiles or different layouts for your stream deck based on the primary open action. Now, on my stream deck, and I guess I'll go ahead and pull up the software here. I have specific folders for specific programs. Now, in theory, I don't need to do this anymore, and I will do some testing and we'll set it up here as a test. Um, but in theory, now when this application is at the forefront, it will automatically change to this profile, which is pretty cool. I will say first and foremost, I, before we get too much further, before you update to 2.0, go into your settings. This is going to look a little different for you because I've already updated now. Go to profiles or there's like layouts and export your layouts. Export them, name them appropriately, keep them dated, keep regularly backing them up, but back up your layouts because when you update, you may need to re-import them. It may get rid of them. So keep that in mind. Back them up. But yeah, so we're going to actually, we're going to go in here. We're going to go to edit profiles and we're going to make a new one and we're going to test this. So I'm going to call new profile uh, other program files Adobe Audition. We're going to make my Audition profile. Okay. It's going to change based on Adobe Audition. We're going to rename it Audition. That's not how you spell Audition. That's fine. We're going to close it. If we go over here to Audition, nothing's here. So if we go to default profile copy and we open up the Audition folder, I'm going to copy each one of these over here to the audition folder. And yes, my icons are upside down. That's because if you saw my video on the touch bar for PC, uh, I have mine mounted upside down on the bottom of my monitor. Now, this is a little tedious. I could have, in theory, re-imported this a little easier, but you get the idea. All right, that's, that's fine. That's two shortcuts. So instead of me having to physically hit a button, to change a folder, which is still totally doable. You still have folders, but instead of me having to do this, we're on default profile now. If I open up Adobe Audition, and there may be a setting for this, so we'll see in just a second. It automatically changes. It automatically changed to the Audition profile. Now, if I come back here, uh, okay, here's an iffy thing I'm going to have with it. Stream Deck will automatically switch to this profile when a program is in the foreground default profile. I believe that's what I need. Okay, hang on. All right, editing epos here. I just wanted to jump in and add a correction here uh, for the re or for a minute here in this video. I got confused as to why it wasn't switching back to the default profile. I still don't know why that didn't happen in this instance, but I went and talked to Elgato and I was like, yo, it needs to automatically switch back. And they were like, yo, it does. And I've tested it since then. And as long as you assign a profile to be the default profile, once you click off of your program that that a smart profile is set to, it will switch back. That is how it's supposed to work. Uh, you may need to restart the app after you set this up the very first time or something. Like I said, I don't know why it didn't happen here, but that is how it works. So you set a default profile that always shows, and then you set up smart profiles for different applications. And instead of assigning an application to your default profile, you give it the default profile toggle. You switch to a program, it switches to that profile. You switch back, it switches to the default. Just wanted to fix my mistakes. The big thing that I have been most excited for is multi-device support. You can now hook up multiple stream decks on the same PC, which is something I've been really asking for. So I have a second stream deck here. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out, and we're going to hook this bad boy up to my computer. We're going to see how it works. Hey, all right, so it's firmware updating this one. This one's from back in the beta. So it's updating it. 
it's flickering both of them on and then it wants to add now it's asking if i want to copy the profiles uh from my first stream deck to this one i'm going to say copy just so i have it and now this stream deck is matching my other stream deck but if i hit back on stream deck one all right so here you're watching the screen and this at the same time if i hit back on screen deck one bam this one stays the same so this one is operating independently and you can actually see this here stream deck two stream deck three i don't know why they're two and three instead of one and two um, but you can actually name them so you can control and so now all of the folders all of the application specific profiles change like this so this is where i'm excited for this in combination i'm sorry i'm i'm super nerding out and getting excited here but this is where i'm excited for this in combination with the multiple profiles is I can have my touch bar, my one that's mounted to my monitor, set static to just specific folders and specific shortcuts that I use globally. Then I can have this one next to my keyboard set to automatically change based on what program is open, which means I can, you know, this one, regardless of when I'm doing, sorry, when I'm doing all of my production, whether OBS is open, whether uh, Photoshop is open, Audition, Premiere, After Effects, it will automatically switch to the appropriate profile. So while I'm doing all my production, I don't have to change this at all. Whatever is open is what it will be addressing. And if I need a global shortcut, I hit that on my mainstream deck. Unlimited potential. I am so freaking stoked for this. And I'm really excited. I don't think Taryn has really covered more of the advanced stuff that he's done with it yet. So I'm really excited to see this. Uh, so you can mess around with what profile is where, move shortcuts around, doesn't affect the other one. And then you can come over here into your settings. You can choose your different stream decks. But if you go to general, yeah, you can rename your stream decks. So stream deck one, monitor. Stream deck three, production. That way I know which is which. You can also change the brightness of the backlight on a per stream deck basis too, which is pretty neat. They have new Streamlabs integration, so now you can control Streamlabs directly from the Stream Deck. There are options to skip alerts, mute alerts, pause alerts. Uh, there's a uh, wheel spin. You have to add an account. I don't know what the wheel spin is. You can play credits. You can empty your tip jar. You can show a specific media file or change a Stream Deck or a Streamlabs profile. So if you use Streamlabs for all of this, they have improved their OBS plugin, which will make uh, OBS actions a little bit more reliable. Some people were still having problems with it not working, um, with uh, with some actions in OBS not working. And they finally added start recording and start streaming buttons. This wasn't available at launch, and I can't figure out why. Uh, but they finally have start and start start and stop recording and streaming buttons for OBS, which is nice. The new firmware prevents or helps prevent actions from going through twice, which I have run into, especially when here, if I switch over here to monitor, as I'm switching folders, sometimes it will accidentally tap this corner piece. So you see this corner where my back arrow is to go back up a level? That's also a shortcut for something else. Now, I could be smart and change that shortcut, but I got used to the layout. I don't want to. But sometimes then, when I hit that shortcut, it accidentally like starts when I hit up on a folder. As far as I know, I'm only hitting it once. But it still tries to launch that shortcut, which is a little annoying. So hopefully this new firmware fixes that. They've also made some various updates to the firmware. One issue a lot of people have been having, I never really, well, I have run into actually, is that when you sign into Twitter and other social accounts to the Stream Deck via the settings accounts, is it would keep asking you to sign in over and over and over. Supposedly, they've been working on that since the launch, like off and on, like in various updates. Supposedly, it's supposed to be a lot better now. And that's pretty much it. Some minor fixes here and there, but those are the major ones. I now have... I'm throwing my phone. I now have two stream decks hooked up to my computer, and I can seriously optimize my production workflow a lot better now. Like, the, the one was already sick, but I did, after I mounted it to my monitor, I did find myself using it less to reach up and tap it and having, one, having them separately, because I still love the value of what the monitor touch bar provides for its specific uses, but now that I have two separate ones, oh, it's going to be so cool. Thank you so much for watching. Oh my god, I am... I am stoked. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, smash the like button. Subscribe for more awesome tech videos. I'm Epos Vox, you know, make tech easier and more fun. Link to the Stream Deck update documentation. And uh, oh, they also improved their uh, 4K60 support in the OBS 21 update, by the way. Uh, links to the updates and to the discussion here will be in the description down below, as well as a product affiliate link, probably for Amazon, maybe B&H as well. 
or the stream deck if you want to pick one up yourself go pick it up i highly recommend it and a link to my review of it in case you need more convincing i'm eples Vox. i'll see you next time this video is sponsored by viewers like you our videos would not be possible without the generosity of those of you who contribute to one of our fan funding options via donor box twitch subscriptions direct contributions via paypal or patreon to join our inner circle and get behind the scenes looks at videos, go to eposvox.com slash support to learn more and join us on Discord at eposvox.com slash Discord. Thanks.